The name's Bo, Jim Bo, and here's my review of Spectre. Yeah, Spectre. Daniel Craig plays James Bond, a secret agent who's fallen out with his boss, but goes rogue to take down a secret organization and ultimately save his boss. Oh, hang on, that's the last one. Anyway, Christoph Waltz plays the baddie, the deadliest thing since Phil Spectre. His henchman is played by Dave Bautista as Mr. Hinks. Good name for your cat, that. M is played by Ray Fiennes, quite literally a letter from the government there. Leia Seydoux is Dr. Madeline Swan, and Monica Bellucci is not in this movie for very long. The director is Sam Mendes, who used to do proper theatre, and the first thing to say is that, much like his previous effort, Skyfall, this movie takes itself very seriously indeed. Shot in tasteful creams and blacks, like a very, very long Guinness advert, it's grown-up Bondis, and indeed so well made is it, that it wasn't until about an hour in, when they get to that giant secret Yorkshire pudding in the Morocco desert, that I realised that it's actually not very good. Why? Well, here's my 10-point spectre rejection. At 10, Daniel Craig looks utterly bored, poor chap, as Bond these days, phoning this performance in, possibly through a device in his socks. Nine, Christoph Waltz as the chief inspector isn't actually that scary, and his machine for boring holes in people's heads doesn't really work. Should he use that theme song? At eight, his plan for world domination equally is downright unambitious. At no point does one satellite try and swallow another or even point a giant laser at Washington DC. And seven, equally, nobody walks across a bunch of crocodiles' backs or even wrestles a shark. At six, it's this jacket and this one. Five, if it's a serious film now, how come the machine gun toting henchmen still have a worse aim than Emil Heskey? Four, the dialogue, like, You've got a secret, something you can't tell anyone. Thanks, Money Penny. Can you explain again about tautologists? Three, it goes on for hours and hours, longer than any Bond film ever. Two, is the love interest. Bond and Swan have an age gap that Woody Allen would be proud of. And at one, with a bullet, it's the lack of passion anywhere in this film. After all, this is a movie that contains probably the biggest revelation ever about Bond's childhood, and yet nobody, not Bond himself, nor the director, seemed remotely bothered by it. It's almost like it's just another plot device in an impressive but emotionally stunted procession of set pieces. Now, I remember the worst excesses of the old Bonds, and I get the need for an update, but at least those films were trying to entertain us. This just feels a bit soulless. And perhaps that's not surprising, given the way the producers have turned him into a big brand. Time was you could shine a laser at Bond's double O's, and he still wouldn't talk. These days, though, he's out there shilling for mobile phones, bottled beers, and razors. It's all a bit tasteless. In summary, then, this, for all the money spent and that glorious opening tracking shot, ultimately left me as unstirred as the great man's martini. 007, I'll give it a double oh five and a half.